As an Australian, April 25, Anzac Day, makes me stop and remember. In particular, I think about my granddad who fought in the Battle of the Somme. Albany was the departure point for so many of our Anzacs, and as part of the centenary commemorations of Australia's entry into the Great War, this incredible Anzac Centre has been opened to keep future generations in touch with an important part of our history. Just imagine that. Late 1914, over 40,000 young Anzacs, men and women, left from here to head off to the Great War. Many of them leaving home for the first time. And if you think about it, perhaps their final glimpse of Australia was Breaksea Island, just 12 kilometres off the coast from Albany. Now there's a story. Actually, it's a fascinating one. And to tell it, we need two key ingredients. The first one is transport. Taking off from the old whaling station just out of Albany, Skyhook Helicopters is the only tour company licensed to land on the island. Talk about windswept and interesting. Just getting out here is an adventure. Its stark cliffs pounded by the Southern Ocean, Breaksea Island is bleak but hauntingly beautiful. At the highest point of the island sits a lighthouse. At over 100 years old, this is the new one that replaced the original built in 1858 by convicts. The other key ingredient in this yarn is Diane Wolfer, a local author who was so intrigued about the story of a young lady who once lived here on Breaksea that she was compelled to write the book Lighthouse Girl. The first idea began, I read an article in, in a newspaper by Ron Crittle just mentioning Albany's connection to Anzac and there was one paragraph that mentioned uh, Perth man Don Watson's mother, how he remembered uh, his mother telling stories of waving to the troops. Her dad was the lighthouse keeper and while when the troops left to go to World War I, the gathering of the first AIF, uh, she was here and probably the last person to signal to the departing fleet. Not sure if it was Morse code, perhaps with a mirror or with these big semaphore flags. Either way, they could have flag chatted for days. I love the fact that that story inspired you to write the book and then your book inspired another story that we just recently had in Perth. Yes, it was amazing. Jean-Luc from Royal Deluxe, he was really inspired and excited about the story of the lighthouse girl and waving to the troops. And so he incorporated into that the journey of the giants, which for me was incredible. So Diane, do you think that your story actually shines a light on that Anzac connection and Western Australia? I think it does. So often a lot of our stories have been more Eastern States based. To think that there was a girl here waving to those troops, all of the troops from Australia and New Zealand as they left in the first AIF, um, it's a really important part of West Australian history, I think. There's not much here at Breaksea Island, but for some, that glorious solitude is the draw card. The former family homes of the two lighthouse keepers are slowly being restored, but other than that, there is nothing to distract you from pondering that image of thousands of our young men and women on ships heading out to the open sea and into war. The solitude of Breaksea Island is quite amazing. I've discovered it myself today, and maybe for you in years to come, because the lighthouse keeper's residence may be available for you to be an eco-tourist in. We'll put all the information up on our webpage for you to enjoy. And if you want to make this one of your destinations in WA, I would consider it.